Yes, getting recorded. So hi everyone again, um, and uh, welcome to um, our first session of uh, the speaker series. Uh, my name is Lauren Hill, and I will be your host for today. Um, and with Sarah and Madhu here with me, we we are organizing uh, this little uh, initiative. Um, so for this um, first um, um, series on, uh, for the first session, sorry, uh, on the speaker series on uh, decolonizing methodologies for sustainability, sustainability research. Um, so we are welcoming uh, not only you, but also uh, Professor Ranjan Data, who is uh, the Canada uh, Research Chair uh, tier two in community disaster research at the Indigenous Studies Department of Humanity at Mont Royal University uh, in Calgary. But before the fun stuff, uh, you have to deal with me a little bit more. Um, so before we start, I will um, leave uh, Madhu to do our land acknowledgements because I am not in Canada, Sarah is not in Canada. So uh, Madhu will give, you the, give us the honor of doing uh, this land acknowledgement today. Certainly, Lorraine. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge that we are hosting today's event from the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. This is where the Waterloo main, main campus is located, and we are very privileged to be living and working from here. So back to you, Lorraine. Thank you. So just uh, a little note that um, this initiative, uh, I mean, it, it, it was kind of a bit uh, of a uh, chance, but this initiative fits well uh, within this week's focus on active work with it, uh, toward sorry, reconciliation and reciprocity. Uh, our focus, however, is more global in scope because in this series, not only today, but in the, the, the months to come, we will be having, we will hear from various perspectives, not only uh, from uh, Canada and North America, but also from outside, uh, from around the world, from people who have their own um, reckoning really with uh, the effect of uh, colonization within uh, our, our research methodologies. So um, before I give you a bit of background uh, in this initiative, uh, just some kind of housekeeping rules. Um, so uh, because this is the first uh, and we kind of trying out how things going to work. So um, today, if you want, if you have questions, um, please use the Q&A uh, the Q &A button uh, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have any issues uh, or you want to uh, communicate with um, uh, any of the panelists, oh, well, not panelists, there's only one panelist, but any of us, um, please use the chat uh, function. Um, and we want to remind you that uh, we are uh, doing this respectfully and that is a, there is a uh, zero tolerance for uh, disrespect and anyone that is uh, caught, quote unquote, uh, would be uh, immediately kicked out. So not to be the bad teacher, but that's the rules. So be respectful, uh, embrace uh, the talk and, and feel free to, to just ask questions, etc. cetera. So um, just a bit of a background into this initiative. So some uh, people who were there before and, uh, kind of know, but uh, so we started talking about kind of context and the importance of our uh, of our positionality in our research uh, about a year or so ago, and um, because of what happened in the world, like um, in in the U.S., for example, with uh, George Floyd. Uh, Etc. We kind of we we kind of this conversation kind of deviated a little bit into how our privilege uh, and impact right our or affect really our our research practices. So we had a bit of a pilot 
conversation uh, in March. Uh, it was really a short uh, three weeks, uh, small committee uh, uh, pilot. Uh, where we had this discussion on uh, this um, becoming, like really thinking about our positionality and learning, identifying the problematic areas of our research and how our positionality affects those and uh, kind of unlearning, having this a bit of an action plan um, on how to go forward. So now uh, we are, uh, I mean, we are just students. So we thought it would be good to hear from people who have been in, in this journey before us, who have had experience uh, going through uh, 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 this unlearning, becoming unlearning and, and relearning process. And so this is what we are doing uh, today. So um, yes, I think that's it. If I didn't forget anything. Uh, without then uh, further ado, I will uh, leave the floor uh, to uh, Professor Data, and uh, you can choose to introduce yourself to your, uh, how you want to. So thank you and enjoy the talk. Thank you so much, Pastor Paul, uh, for having this opportunity. I really appreciate uh, this uh, opportunity to knowing uh, all of you that initiate him. I will introduce myself once I start. So let's start my um, presentation. Yes. Can you hear me and see my presentation? Yes, we can. Excellent. So today, what I'm going to share is my, uh, not only my research, it's my lifelong journey. Uh, that I have been growing through almost uh, my whole life. So my talk will be basically about my my own journey. That what I have learned from my um, from my research, from my uh, teaching, from my own uh, social justice movement. So I organized my talk in three main issues. How do I understand and practice the meaning of research from the colonial perspective? And uh, what are the challenges uh, in research, in current forms of research that community see and how community wants to solve those challenges. I will share two of my case studies uh, from my uh, ongoing research. First, I would like to acknowledge that uh, currently living I'm in TD7 territory um, almost a year. I lived TD6 territory uh, last, 10 years, and I had an opportunity to uh, learn from indigenous elder, knowledge keepers, educators, and scholars. They are the one who actually helped me to uh, starting my decolonial journey to understand who I am in this land, in this indigenous land, what are my responsibility. And decolonization that I have learned is not an event or is not an, uh, that's something we can done it. It's a lifelong empowering process. That's why I call each moment, each opportunity as a ceremony in my life. So um, I born and raised a minority community in Bangladesh. I had the opportunity to learn from indigenous community from Bangladesh and India. And I had also opportunity to work and learn from some indigenous community from Finland, Norway, Currently, uh, I'm working with the uh, indigenous uh, community in TD6 and seven territories, DNA, Cree, Inuit, and Métis communities. And luckily, I have opportunity to learning very beginning of the Cree. So I'm very grateful to the elder and knowledge keeper who is actually helping me to learn uh, Cree. Learning indigenous knowledge and who I am in this land is not for my research is also as a color settler here to create my own belongingness with this land, with the people, with the history of colonial history of the Canada. So today, uh, again, I'm going to talk about how I have understood or understanding, ongoing understanding meanings of the colonial uh, research and what are the challenges and how to overcome those challenges uh, from the community perspective. 
last but not least important, I would like to talk some of the ways uh, that my research, I'm doing research, how to transform our research into action so that it can benefit us as a researcher. In the same time, it can benefit uh, for the community that we are working. So um, from my last 15 years working with various indigenous and minority communities in North America and South Asia, I had uh, many opportunities to learn uh, what, it does, what does actually uh, decolonial research mean from the community perspective. So today I'm going to share some of those perspectives uh, that I have learned and came several times. There are many ways of doing and learning. Uh, however, I'm not able to bring all those perspectives today, but I would like to bring some of the uh, uh, significant perspective that has been very prominent in my learning. So when we are talking about decolonial meaning of research, what does it actually mean as a color settler here or minority uh, researcher in uh, back home Bangladesh that I uh, born and raised? When we are talking about decolonial meaning of research, the, from the community perspective, it first comes indigenous land rights, minority land rights. Without land understanding land rights or without um, advocating uh, land rights for the community, the meaning of the, uh, research actually uh, doesn't uh, make impactful for the community. Another significant uh, issue that I have learned uh, from the community, uh, when we are talking about meaning of research, we have to understand uh, we, that the many research has been done with the community and um, many research became challenges for the community. That's why we have to decolonize our static ways of knowing and doing. Um, because community, they have been using research in their own way for thousands of years, particularly for indigenous community. And they know what, the, uh, what does it mean, the meaning of research from the community-based culture, uh, culture practice. So that's why we need, we need to decolonize our ways of knowing and doing when we are talking about meaning of research. Another important uh, factor that I have learned, um, community face, uh, community know their knowledge is sustainable because it has been sustainable for thousands, thousands of years. So community elder knowledge keeper, they are the scientists for the community and their knowledge is scientific because they know what is the sustainability uh, for their community. We as a researcher or educator who are thinking our knowledge is innovative or discovery, um, we have to unlearn those perspectives and respect, learn and honor indigenous ways of knowing and doing and collaborate, uh, collaborate in our ways of knowing. From the North America uh, that I have been working last 10 years, we, when we are doing research, we have to be uh, responsible to uh, learn and act according to truth and reconciliation uh, call for action. Um, and we have to understand how we can incorporate those calls in our research in a way it can beneficial for the community. Community, they have been uh, doing their own work of research for a long time. They don't want to. Uh, uh, they don't want to dis. Uh, they want. They want to collaborate with the academics. They want Western ways of knowing. They want to use Western ways of knowing in a way it can benefit for the community. So community want meaningful collaboration, meaningful bridging between the academic Western ways of knowing and communities ways of knowing. Another important aspect that I have learned when we are talking about meaning of research, we have to understand our research should be advocate for reclaiming uh, indigenous land rights, protect in land, uh, water, culture, and language right. So these are the uh, main perspective, few perspective that I have learned uh, from my 15 years uh, decolonial research journey. So what are the challenges um, in current forms of research? Uh, why community feel uh, is a problematic? 
I also, again, I also would like to highlight some of the challenges that community uh, want to inform uh, to the Western researcher and the researcher that we uh, becoming researcher. So first one is miscommunication between researcher and communities, because community, uh, many researcher, they comes from the Western perspective, they think their ways of knowing is the uh, fixed or best ways, but community, since they know their ways of knowing sustainable for a long, long time, community found many researchers in North America, South Asia, and other parts of the world, they found the researcher, those who are coming from the Western institution, they have long-standing miscommunication about, miscommunication about indigenous sustainabilities, indigenous ways of knowing and practice. Another significant uh, point is uh, many researchers, when they're doing a research with indigenous communities and other minority communities, they fail to address decolonization in their uh, fieldwork, in their research coalition, in their research in many communities. The indigenous, many researchers, uh, they refuse uh, to indigenous self-governance that has been sustainable for a long time. They denied, or even they don't want to understand what does that indigenous self-governance mean in our research. And also uh, when we work with the indigenous community, if we want to talk with only one indigenous elder or knowledge keeper, we think, oh, we, we are done. And uh, indigenous community knowledge varies according to elder to elder, land to land, community to community. And that is the beauty of indigenous collaborative ways of knowing. And many communities, they suggested or discussed that researchers, those who are coming from an academic institution, they fail to address indigenous collaborative approaches. And of course, settler colonialism is significant impact in indigenous land rights and residential school issues, missing and murdered indigenous women, and many other issues that has been created by settler colonialism. Once we don't know as a researcher the impact of the settler colonialism, how it has been created, we are not actually show who we are as a researcher. What are our responsibility in our research when we are doing research with the indigenous communities? And we have to understand racism is not gone. Colonization is not gone. It came in new forms. It's alive in our everyday practice. So many researchers, according to the community, they think uh, the researcher, many researchers, they don't want to understand racism is alive in everyday practice. So um, how I am doing, mostly I'm using relational theoretical framework and methodology. Relational theoretical framework, it, the reason I'm using, because it's make us um, to the community participant as our reality, as uh, land, as our parts of body. It's make, our, make us responsible to, to not only to our research, but also who we are as a researcher, uh, what are we need to do, it also help us to uh, build trustful relationship. So a couple of methods that I've been using, for example, traditional storytelling, uh, traditional music, arts, dance, and another important is uh, method I've been using blanket exercise, is an indigenous methodology from uh, North America, it's teaching what is how colonization has been created. And indigenous people shouldn't define by the only colonization when, when we are talking about decolonization. Because indigenous people have been living sustainable way for thousand years. They have a long sustainable stories. So blanket exercise is helping us to understand to pre-colonial stories, during colonial stories, and what are the responsibilities should we take during the new colonial states. And we, I had opportunity to learn with indigenous elder knowledge keeper uh, as a working method. And um, I uh, had opportunity to learn from the indigenous elder knowledge keeper youth as a co-researcher. And be, being part of the everyday movement, because 
uh, at the end of the day, land and water uh, is all, to protect land and water is all of our responsibility. And I always try to reflect what I have been learning, how my learning is reshaping me, respecting, deep listening to the community. As a color settler, I have a many uh, um, opportunities to learn from the community, empower myself, uh, and create my belongingness with this land. So I would like to give two of my current uh, research that, that I have been doing to explaining what are the challenges in current research and uh, what does the decolonial research mean? First example I would like to uh, give from my current research. The, uh, from I have been living in Saskatchewan for the last 10 years. And within 18 years, from 2020 to 2018, there was 18.9 billion uh, liter of oil leak happened in Saskatchewan, only in Saskatchewan and most of the oil leak happen in indigenous communities. So I was thinking, actually, what does it mean 18.9 billion uh, oil spill uh, in, in Saskatchewan? How big it is when we are talking 18.9? Let's uh, see how big it is. So if we calculate 2.6 million liter is one equivalent uh, of Olympic size of swimming pool, it is 7,307 Olympic sites of swimming pool leak happen only in Saskatchewan. And uh, most, more than 70% oil leak happen in, with indigenous, near indigenous water, near indigenous communities in three provinces, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba. And when oil leaks happen, it's impact everyone. It's a uh, water, insect, animal, plant, everything. So, um, and um, I had opportunity to learn from the indigenous elder, knowledge keeper and leader directly from, uh, from a key First Nation community in Saskatchewan. When we are talking about impact, an elder and knowledge keeper, they say we have to decolonize our understanding of uh, impact because most time we think, oh, it's impact only water or land. And this, when they have explained, they have explained actually what does the impact mean? Impact not only water, it's impact soil, plant, health, animal, spirituality, as you can see, almost hundreds of areas is impacted when a pipeline leak happens. So we as a researcher, we have to decolonize uh, understanding what does that actually impact mean from the community perspective. And indigenous community, they said it's impact seven generation. It's destroyed that last three generation what we have been created. It's going to be impact last next few, three future generation. And as a current generation, they are looking how profit maximization actually destroying land, water, environment, everything. So, uh, what are the challenges community are thinking? Uh, from the researcher, from the industries, from the government. The one pipeline spill happened at the right way, government and industry, they said, uh, no, it's, it's not going to impact you. So it, it's nothing happened. So it's false claim. And uh, when many research are done from the industries and uh, universities, none of the researchers, uh, the community explain, they talk with the community. They think, oh, we know it better, so we can give certificate is done. And according to the community, the sample size the researcher too is very small and the very neglected area that oil impacted. And some of the researchers, interestingly, they claim oh, uh, to the community, oh, oil is good for you, good for your soil, good for your plant. And uh, one of the elders said, it's not that uh, science is neutral. When a uh, community hired their own researcher, they said, no, this claim is not true. It's impacted everyone. Oil is not good for, any, no, no, it's not good for anyone. So the elder said, is, why is meaning of science or claims that scientists are making, why they are different? Uh, and many researchers are only doing Western-based research from the, uh, from the universities, from the industries. 
And those forms of research or industries, the oil spill happen, is spoken the trust from the provincial, federal, because they were uh, making false claim from the industries, from the researcher. The we as a researcher, we are making face a false claim. We as a claiming as scientist, can he, uh, claiming as a discovery, we are making false claim. So that's why community think is broken the trust. And uh, no negotiation before or after. Uh, not enough, enough financial support for the community, no legal support, no consultation before or after. So community, they say the misinformation or no information from the government, from the industries, researchers, uh, they deny what happened, what community is facing. They hiding, uh, researcher hiding the information, um, industries they are hiding and also uh, provincial government they are hiding, federal government they are hiding, mismanagement, and no or poor cleaning uh, during or after. And there are significantly violate of treaty rights that uh, federal government signed with the indigenous nations. So indigenous people are not only talking about the problems, they have been living in the land from uh, they have been uh, facing many struggles, but they know how to build sustainability for their own community. We as a researcher, we have to decolonize our ways of knowing and doing uh, through collaborating with indigenous elder, knowledge keeper. First, they talk about researcher, they need to understand what is the treaty rights, how we can incorporate treaty rights into our research, into our learning, how we can collaborate collaborate meaningful way uh, our Western knowledge into traditional knowledge so that community, they can use Western knowledge to solving the problem. What is the problem now in Western research? They are using traditional knowledge as a, as a tools for, um, you know, for recreating colonization uh, in the indigenous communities. So community, elder, knowledge keeper, according to community, they should be considered as an expert, as a scientist for the community. They are not saying they are the scientist for the whole Canada or all over the world. They are saying they are knowledgeable for their community. So we have to consider, respect the um, community, uh, elder, knowledge keeper, leader as a knowledgeable person, as a scientist for the community, and we have to engage our uh, youth to the community so that it can create um, youth self-determination and also respect self-governance for the indigenous communities. And also community says, well, while they are talking about development, they are also responsible to protect their environment. So it has to be balanced, uh, balanced ways of doing. And TD rights or TD responsibilities, it should be guideline how we should do research, how uh, development should be there. And the concept of development, indigenous community, they have been using for many, many years. But new forms of development or new meanings of development is, in, in, according to indigenous community, is colonization, not only hum, on human, but also on non-human as well. So um, another case study I was uh, doing, I had opportunity to actually learn from Dene First Nation communities. So it, according to the Dene elder, when we are talking about decolonization, they said our land rights is decolonization. And land is not only from a uh, human sense, human understanding, or we are talking scientific sense. So land is for everyone. So I requested elder, what does actually mean when you are talking about uh, land is for everyone? So he actually um, requested uh, one of the, their youth to draw a picture, what does actually land mean? So when land uh, mean everything, it's not only considered for the human, it's considered for, they are land, water, sky, insect, everything means uh, meaning of land and land rights is their um, decolonial meaning of research. And it's also meaningful collaboration um, uh, to, between indigenous ways of knowing and 
tradition uh, and Western ways of learning. We have to first unlearn. When I'm talking about unlearn, that means we have to understand what are the challenges in our current forms of research. And we have to unlearn those. And also the same time, we have to relearn uh, how we can be part of the indigenous ways of doing, how we can be, um, can be part of solving the problem that community wants to. <clears throat> and as meaning of decolonization is collaborative ways of knowing. Collaborate learning from elders. Uh, one of the example when uh, Dene First Nation children they were finding fossil fuel. They are of course interested to understand the meaning of scientific meaning of uh, doing this. In the same time, they wanted to know what is their ancestor story. How ancestor have been living sustainable ways of uh, uh, knowing and doing. So they were so excited to uh, exploring. Uh, those scientific knowledge when they were able to connect with their traditional stories. And Elder was one of the uh, connector to explaining those stories into their traditional stories. And the meaning of decolonization is also relational ways of knowing. When we are talking about relational ways of knowing, we have to understand that uh, it's not knowledge come from only human. It's come from plants, it's come from the water, it's come from the sky. And we, as a researcher, when we are learning, we become responsible to share those knowledge to the future generation, to share those knowledge to our uh, future generation, uh, those who are becoming a researcher. And indigenous elders are explaining uh, meaning of decolonization through their traditional knowledge. Why hunting, gathering, or doing traditional breeding is important uh, for building sustainability to the communities. And as you can see, one of the uh, knowledge keeper, key knowledge keeper explaining why traditional stories are important for explaining uh, meaning of decolonization research for the newcomer and settlers. And uh, indigenous, you are, they were teaching the newcomers, uh, refugees, people to meaning of decolonization to blanket exercise, how we can work together to build, uh, when we are talking about, uh, we, I'm talking about me uh, as a color settler to create belongingness in this indigenous land. And indigenous elder explaining, knowing the uh, importance of native plan or uh, and how we can be part of the indigenous land right movement so that we understand uh, how to respond in decolonization. So building relationship with uh, indigenous people, uh, in the animal, plant, insect is also part of the decolonization. So in our uh, in 2011, we started a community garden project uh, with uh, 10 community garden from three different countries. In 2000. 19, it became 120 community garden plot from uh, 28 different countries and guiding by the indigenous elder, knowledge keepers. They are guiding children and also adult how to know uh, indigenous importance of indigenous plan, how to build relationship, how to create education, how to learn math, science in from the community garden. And indigenous um, uh, as you can see, color settler or uh, refugee children, they are learning indigenous ways of knowing and what does the collective ways of knowing as well. And bringing the uh, cross-cultural meaning of music to the community garden to understand meaning of decolonization. And understanding uh, sense of community uh, when elder knowledge keepers, um, they're coming, we, we had of, our children had opportunity to draw that plan also telling their story. So children were not only drawing or growing food, but also had opportunity to learn um, the traditional stories and connecting their own culture with their own culture. And as you can see, children, they are drawing their, uh, drawing their photos from the community garden and also uh, connecting their ways of understanding. This is another picture. Uh, and also another, what is the stories of butterfly? How they are connecting with the stories of butterfly? Why is it important for 
as, uh, as a color settler here. And also, as you can see, children are uh, drawing the pictures and also writing their own stories. And this is the decolonization means knowing the importance, not only human, but also non-human. And at the uh, end of the day, we have to understand we all are 3D people. When we are talking about 3D people, that means we all are relative or are responsible to each other. So what does actually mean uh, decolonization as a researcher, um, as an environmental researcher? So uh, I, had, we, I had many opportunities, as I said previously. So elder and knowledge keeper, they suggested a few of the suggestions. Uh, I requested them, please guide me how I can start my decolonization. And many elder and knowledge keeper, they say, we are, need to know who we are, where we came from, who own this land that we are working, living on, and doing research. What does the decolonization meaning mean for me as a personality? And um, when we are talking, what does the decolonization mean? That means we have to know the colonial history, pre-colonial history, and um, and how we can relearn back peace and meaning of reconciliation from the indigenous people. And as a color settler, I cannot define the meaning of reconciliation, but I can learn from the community. I can practice those in our uh, research and build solidarity uh, to the everyday struggle, struggle to protect land and water because it's all of our responsibility. And uh, land-based education is one of the significant ways of achieving social justice movement or social justice in, in, our, through, in our research. So community, as I said previously, the meaning of decolonization is very interconnected with indigenous land rights and uh, learn and practice PRC call for action. And we have to honor and respect indigenous self-determination, self-governance when you are doing research uh, in our environmental sustainabilities understand indigenous knowledge that they, they don't need validation from the Western science because it has been proven from thousand years. If we think about colonization just start, started only 400 years in, uh, in, in Canada, right? And but indigenous people living for many thousands here and they know how, how their knowledge has been effective. So that's why indigenous knowledge that don't need any validation from the science, uh, Western research. However, they want to collaborate with the Western science. And when we are doing uh, research, we have to understand this is also our res responsibility to protect indigenous language, culture through our research. Honor and creating space for indigenous knowledge, uh, creating uh, advocate for our research. That's why I call my research is biased. I, my research is not neutral. My research is biased for the community that I have been working. Uh, my research is biased for the protecting land and water. So my research is not neutral uh, and I'm proud for it. My research is relational. When I'm saying relational, it means accountable. Today we are, I'm sharing uh, what I have been doing with all of you. When you are hearing, you also become responsible. You also become my relative to, uh, learn and act through your own research. So um, it's also interconnected consciousness. Considering um, research as a community uh, capacity building, we have to understand it's not doing going and doing research. We have to build trustful relationship um, to the community. So the community, community have opportunity to know who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing research. I'm getting my degree, I'm getting a tenorship from, my, uh, from community knowledge. Is that my knowledge? Who belong, uh, who, who I am? I'm just a learner. I have to understand um, my research has to uh, benefit to the community. Otherwise I'm just recreating the colonization. So, um, now how we can transform um, our research into action? Uh, we have to create meaningful bridge between uh, our knowledge and uh, also communities' worldviews. 
understanding complexity in adoption and barrier. That means we have to understand community uh, knowledge base according to the community to community, land to land, elder to elder. And that is the beauty of the hybrid ways, ways of knowing. And we have to understand that multiple ways of knowing and doing is important for the community. And it's also uh, scientific uh, for the community. And we need to learn those perspectives. And it's research that I have been learning and doing is not just go there and do research and done. We have to spend time understand each other and has to be an uh, ongoing process. Decolonization or research is not an event, it's a process that we have to build as an ongoing process so that community uh, know what we are, we are doing, they can guide us, we can learn from the community. That's why in my research, I learned community one, community-based participatory action research. Uh, participatory action research because it's action for both, for me uh, to, uh, to know who I am, how to decolonize my research and how to change me as a researcher from the community. And common is also action for the community because the community wants to see is helping to the community uh, through our research, through our research question, research objective, research finding and publications. And engaging um, community for our, uh, not only once we are done proposal and just talking with the community before even we have found, uh, create our research question, before we were, even we are thinking what topics they want to do, it, how they want to do it, requesting them to help me, uh, what kind of topics they wanted, uh, community wants to do research so that I'm, I'm doing research for the community not needs, not only what I want to do. And considering community, my research as a common capacity building, uh, how we can do it, we can, um, we can co-publish, we, uh, we can understand community as a co-researcher so that we can co-publish together. And I have learned also understanding community need in our research and rethinking how uh, my research or what we are doing, it can be beneficial for me, of course, and also is beneficial for the community so that it can be action for both of us. So thank you so much for listening to my uh, stories. And if you have questions, please let me know. Thank you very much for this amazing talk. Um, I took a lot of pictures while you were talking, so that's like really interesting. <laughs> thank you. Um, so um, one thing I forgot to mention uh, earlier is that um, uh, you can, I don't, uh, maybe I mentioned it, but please uh, use the Q&A to ask your questions. Uh, if you have comments, uh, anything like that, please do. Um, and we can, um, we can monitor those. So while um, we received a lot of thank yous, thank you for coming. So while we leave the time for people to type in their questions, um, so we have uh, a few questions that when we were discussing among ourselves about uh, really how to go about it as, as not only PhD student, but future researchers. Um, so we wanted to kind of know um, from like your own journey. So how you came about kind of thinking about the colonization and, oh, what am I doing? Is it really good or no? And why it's not good? So how kind of you came about, what was the, the, the click? Kind of thing to, to go, yeah, to go into that type of thinking, really. Um, well, actually, I didn't explain uh, much about me, who I am. When I was born in minority communities uh, in Bangladesh, we have been displaced many times from our land. Uh, my father got killed because he wanted to protect our land and water. So uh, understanding importance of land uh, from minority perspective, it is started beginning 
right after I born. So I lost my father when I was only 30 days. Then I did my honors and masters in sociology in Western education. I always wanted to be very neutral because I have to be objective. So I shouldn't be biased for my research. And when I was doing research um, after my masters, I was doing very um, quantitative ways of doing research. And I collected many stories from the, uh, our communities uh, and also indigenous communities. And I gave in lots of statistical analysis to the elders, even my mom. My mom said, I don't understand it. I didn't give you the number. What does it mean? I told you the story. What I'm going to do with these numbers? And that was the turning point for me. Actually, what I'm doing? I'm recolonizing my community for my own benefit and also for the uh, research agencies or the uh, Western institutions. I did another master's in USA in um, criminology in very quantitative way. And same problem I faced. I also took various courses in anthropology and sociology. I didn't find myself those research. I was living in Norway, USA. I didn't know who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing my degree is, I was not satisfied. When I moved to University of Saskatchewan for doing my research, for my PhD, first I had opportunity to, uh, first course I was talking with indigenous um, scholar, uh, learning about anti-racist theory practice and indigenous methodology. First time I was learning to speak uh, that our ways of knowing is very important. Before that I was learning, um, in, uh, minorities' ways of doing, traditional ways of doing is not important. It's savage. It's very uncivilized. So we have to be civilized. Even I, when I came as in Canada as immigrant, I was learned that I have to be civilized to showing only white perspective, not talking about indigenous of, ways of knowing or other color perspective. So when I had opportunity to learn from the indigenous scholar, I had a first opportunity to uh, justify me the indigenous ways of knowing or traditional ways of knowing is, knowing is so important. We have to speak up. We have to speak up against all injustice, all racism. That is my uh, starting point that indigenous scholar, uh, elder knowledge keeper helping me to understand uh, I, we, we we can create our belongingness in this land. It's not uh, that we came here to contribute or create recolonization, that multiculturalism teaching, our culture is best. It's only one way of doing. Bangladesh is better than India. India is better than the island. So creating lots of layers. But I understand we have to live together to understand the importance of indigenous people here, indigenous cultures, so that we can connect our own ways of knowing to create belongingness in this land. So that is the big, very important uh, turning point that still I am learning uh, to the indigenous here. They can guide us. And I, when I'm talking about my culture, it's also important because I need to reconnect who I was, what my, how my ancestors fight, how they have been creating uh, sustainabilities. I would be able to know if I know who is this, uh, which land I'm living, how, what was the sustainability here, and how indigenous people have been struggling to protect their land and water. If I know those stories, I am able to connect my own culture, own language, to create my own belonging. And that is my clicking point. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the, the and I think that that's reason it's a lot with us uh, as a person of color trying to uh, create that belonging uh, specifically. I think that that's one thing we were we were struggling a little bit. And uh, the way you you explain your journey is just, it's really inspiring. Thank you. Um, uh, we have well, I have another question, but that's not about me. Let's open the floor. Um, as just before, um, you can upvote uh, just to the audience. You can upvote the question. So um, if there are questions that have been already um, asked in the uh, Q and A and that is interest interested for you, you can upvote it. So I'll just start um, uh, by 
uh, the first question that we have. So um, from um, Emma, um, so the question is, uh, do you have any suggestion on how to encourage uh, those around us to pursue decolonization in their research as well. So basically how uh, someone, uh, an undergrad or really someone kind of starting uh, their research journey can go about uh, doing uh, and using decolonized methodologies. It's a great question. Um, when I was able, uh, I, I was at the initial stage, uh, I had opportunity to talk with the community. Uh, if we want to, if you know which community or want to work, talk with the community elders, knowledge keeper, what they want, how they want. That is the very uh, starting point. And this is the guideline that we can follow. And in the same time, I would like to actually uh, use one of my uh, indigenous scholar um, comments, uh, Mari Bhoti, she is the um, well-known scholar, indigenous scholar for decolonization. And she said, we as a researcher, we have to be excited every morning, the opportunity we are getting. We have to be grateful to the everything, to the community, to the people, to the sun, moon, land that we are living. So research is also the same for me. I'm every morning, every time when I'm talking, I have opportunity, I become excited. I think uh, I feel it is my opportunity, my ceremony. So talking with the community is also part of the ceremony. And talking with the uh, opportunity with elder, to, with uh, the honor and respect, if we have, um, if you don't have money, it's fine. If you have at least uh, tobacco or any traditional gift, uh, just be respectful and ask them. And I'm also doing same here to asking the community um, what we can learn, how we can learn, because they are the one who can guide us. In the same time, we can bring our institutional learning that the way we are learning uh, so that our learning should be tools. Our learning shouldn't be a structure that using indigenous knowledge to our structure in the Western structure. Our learning should be a tools to use those tools that the way community want, the way community wants to solve the problem. So I would say talk to the community elder, knowledge keeper, even talk to your own parents um, who are uh, learning their perspective, how they are doing, and at the same time also learn from the communities uh, to decolonize your stories, your, your own ancestor stories. Thank you. But and then, but do you think it's also just kind of follow up on that question? Then do you think it's easy or it's how do you think then we could go about uh, convincing other like our supervisors, for example, or other more senior researchers like, well, you know, you could have another uh, alternative or like how to kind of go about that then? Well, uh, I I cannot make, I cannot change others, but I can change myself. When I'm thinking about, oh, I'm responsible uh, to the community. I want to learn with the elders and knowledge keepers. The change, change will start from me. Even though my, uh, if I'm a PhD student, I'm not, I'm in the middle, I may not able to change my research at this stage, but I'm changing, I'm learning. And when, once we have done our masters or PhD, it's the starting point because I know I have the tools. I can change those tools and have opportunity to unlearn and relearn. So um, I would say starting from ourselves, from our from our inside, and then our family, then to our friends and in network. Today you are listening. I have opportunity to tell my stories, and you will have other opportunity to tell what you are doing. So be, uh, be responsible and um, building relationship, trustful relationship with, uh, with me uh, and also my participant. It make us more responsible, more accountable. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, we'll take another question. Um, so from Mariam, this is a two part question. Um, the first one, um, <coughs> 
Um, I, so have you written about these approaches and methodologies? Um, so I, I guess we can share some of your papers and, and, um, and uh, um, yeah, afterwards uh, uh, with everyone. Um, but then the, the second one is, have you considered uh, the being aspect alongside with knowing and doing? Yes, as I say, my research is not only academic work. My research is action, action for me, first of all. That's why I write the journey I explained to all of you, I wrote it. How decol decolonizing ways of doing and uh, knowing and doing is empowering for me. I wrote those stories. What does actually decolonizing uh, for me as a researcher or educator? How not only decolonize, when we are talking about decolonization, we think we need to decolonize our research topics and everything, but we have to first decolonize ourselves. I have to unlearn uh, how we can unlearn from the community uh, to uh, also challenging our ways of doing. My uh, ways of doing is reshaping, community helping me to reshape every day, every actions. So I wrote those stories and I also encourage you uh, to write your stories because I found reflective ways, uh, reflective learning is help to reshape, is empowering. So I will share a couple of my um, uh, stories that I wrote as an article, and, and I love to learn from you as well. Thank you. Thank you a lot for that. Um, um, we have another question uh, from Claire, uh, and she's, or I'm, I'm assuming, they're asking, sorry if I'm mis, uh, mispronouncing, is that a word? people, but um, uh, in your experience, have you ever encountered uh, indigenous communities and or elders that are being reluctant to share uh, their traditional uh, um, uh, knowledge with Western researchers? And I maybe even want to ask as an immigrant as well, have you had any issues with that? Of course. Um... Uh, I face many challenges when I was thinking I'm a researcher going from the Western Institute. Since I know who I am, I learn how to unlearn. I always situate myself uh, when I'm talking with elder, I explain, I tell, I tell my stories. The way I'm talking to you today, I explain who I am, why I want to do research, what is my intention and how community uh, elder and knowledge keeper, they are not considering as a participant. They are my relative, their problem, also my problem. Mm -hmm. I explain stories and my intention. I request guidelines um, from the community. It doesn't mean we don't have challenges. Every community, every person, every department have many challenges, but we have to transform when we're thinking about challenges, there are many challenges. Our other challenges come, but we have to know our storytelling, explaining our intention, help to transform our challenges into even strength. I found this very useful to explaining, situating uh, self, uh, intention, and uh, true, true intention, and also telling the story how we are intend, intention to decolonize, learning from the community. So, and community elder and knowledge keeper, I found they always want to uh, guide. They always want to uh, collaborate. And, but when we are thinking from the academic perspective, sitting in the institution, not talking in the community, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, and also it's very complex. It comes from various sites. But when we are going to the community, they are very simple and they want to uh, collaborate and they want us to work uh, with, uh, with their uh, struggle. They want us to be part of their struggle so that we are uh, talking about uh, solidarity. Okay, thank you. And actually uh, a follow up to that then um, is, so from our, uh, our attendance, um, have you then um, 
uh, have you have any have you had any experience um, when you uh, you know following um, this conversation um, that we have with elders that they provide whether it is resolved or uh, the result of those conversation into a non-traditional format. So um, kind of other than a peer review, like what would be other alternatives to present the result of those conversation really? Um, that is very important questions. I just came from uh, one and a half week uh, from the pre-fascination comedy, mostly from Saskatchewan to sharing result. So how we can start? Um, uh, it's not that I'm only research, I did my uh, PhD. I requested elder and knowledge keeper, if indigenous youth or their knowledge keeper, they want to be co-researcher. And indigenous elder and knowledge keeper, they were so happy to be part of, as a researcher. And they published their, uh, um, they published their own language, even though they were part of the, my research but they publish their own ways. This is the one way. Another way is uh, uh, considering uh, elder or knowledge keeper uh, as a researcher and uh, presenting in the conference and showing uh, what we are doing and writing together. Um, and when we are writing, asking, is that the right thing they want to do? you wanted to bring in our findings. It's not only Western ways using SPSS or NB book. We have to do it in a way so that community can understand what we are doing. And what is the findings? How we can transform, uh, of course, we have a PhD dissertation or master's thesis or uh, academic publication, but how we can create a, a policy report, uh, very short, so that community people can understand and give the opportunity uh, to, uh, to elder and knowledge keeper to, to talk about their own problem, own solution, own wits. It's not that I'm, I done my research, I have Western training, I can explain what I understand. Give the opportunity to community to talk, to teach you, to teach me, and also same time learning. And when we are uh, creating the policy brief, so give them the community, community so that they can give it to the, uh, provincial government, industries, so that it can be beneficial. And community, they want, I didn't find that any community, they don't want to do it. They say, come back. The many research has been done in uh, pipeline issue uh, from the universities and industries. And none of the researcher, according to uh, uh, elder knowledge keeper that I learned, they talk with the community. So what is the problem? It's obvious problem in Western ways of doing or Western education system or as a Western researcher. Okay, thank you. Um, we, I, I hope we, I mean, we have a, a, a few more questions. So we'll take a little bit of more of your time if that's okay with you. Um, so um, one question were, because we mentioned in, uh, your talk, uh, the blanket exercise, uh, like as a method that you use. Could you give a bit more detail about that uh, and like how you use it and kind of how you went about using it in, in your research? Well, um, in blanket exercise, actually, is, it was new method for me because I learned from the indigenous uh, scholars in North America. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in blanket exercise, we requested elder and knowledge keeper, please teach us about your sustainable stories. Don elder says, uh, we have a own ways of explaining through the blanket, explaining how you, we were sustainable before col colonial people came here. So one of 97 years, uh, 97 uh, years old elder from Dene Fashion, Fashion Nation communities, he said, I'm 97 years old. I have many successful stories and I'm going to die soon with those successful stories. And my, my young generation, uh, they don't know about it. So when you are learning, you're also becoming responsible to sharing those stories with our young generation, also youth generation. So elders uh, suggested their in generation to teach me uh, or they are learning from their elders to explaining what was the sustainable before colonization started in their land. Uh, 
how they had been living uh, sustainable ways in their community. And what happened that when colonization started? How uh, the oil companies, diamond companies contaminated not only uh, indigenous water, their ways of knowing and their medicine, spirituality, everything. What is happening now? How we should be uh, part of the solidarity to reclaiming indigenous land rights, indigenous ways of doing so that we can protect the, our, uh, our, uh, our land. Uh, when I'm saying our land, that means it's not owning. It's from responsibility sense that we have responsibility. Uh, we don't have choice uh, to uh, choose or not choose. We have to act now uh, to protect our, uh, our mother art. Our art uh, is not only separate from me, it should be considered my, as my body. Land is the same. So should we take the responsibility and blanket exercise, I found uh, it's very effective to understand uh, learning these colonial stories, what happened to this land, what happened to the people, what happened to the sustainable histories here. And as a color settler, if I don't know those colonial stories, I am recreating colonization. I am recreating the whiteness. Whiteness is not only identifying to the color, is about the power. Mm. And many immigrant and refugee community, they want to be white because they have lots of information gap. They have a learning, less learning opportunities. So blanket exercise I found is very uh, effective method to learning those processes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's a, a lot of food for thought there. But just on kind of follow up on that question and um, on one question that was asked. So how then do you, because when we talk about funding, when we talk about even, you know, our own PhD research, that there's a time limit to that. We cannot just be like, okay, we're going to stay there for 10 years. So um, then how do we can translate those alternative way of doing, alternative way of understanding the world to, or not even translate, but communicate those to the funding agencies, uh, you know, the even our universities saying, well, it might take a bit more time so that we can build those relationships. So I wonder what what you what your take on that? Yes, when uh, I had the same problem when I was also not understanding those perspectives. We have to understand we are in learning stage. It means we don't have to do everything together. We have to start at one after another. And when we are talking with the community, it's helping us to focus. What is the one focus that I can do? One learning I can do my research PhD. And um, every day I think when I'm feeling, uh, thinking about me, I see there are many opportunities. And as I say, uh, decolonization is not an event or it's not a course that I'm done. It's a lifelong process. Every steps help us. So think very uh, personal way, very personal level and try to do one action and one by one action. And one option maybe is work as a snowballing to help us to know any other action, what I need to do. But if I think in broader perspective, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to even for understanding, even it's easy to get lost. So it's, uh, I would say it's what was my perspective when I was started my decolonizing course, I was building relationship with the moon. The three months, every, every night I was observing moon and writing how it's changing. First, at the beginning, I was seeing on the buildings because I don't see anything. I don't know how to see it. The same time my, my, my mom passed away and uh, it was very painful time, but I, moon observation helping me to my moon actually helping, guiding us to knowing our responsibility and knowing uh, who we are. So starting very, from the very personal level and very uh, concrete ways, 
and when we walk up, be grateful to the sun and our God is visible. It's not invisible. We can touch, feel. Our land is our, our reality, my body. So starting from here and um, asking community also what they want and how I can do my master's or PhD or postdoc. What topics they want to do it? What is the one thing we can do? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And then final question. And then we stop. No, it's fine. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the final question is um, then because we are in COVID and, um, uh, you know, COVID is, it feels like it's there to stay. So <laughs> I, 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 it's how do you have any advice? Uh, into uh, uh, for researchers to collaborate with um, indigenous communities and First Nation um, during this COVID time, basically. Well, uh, I had actually same feelings when COVID was started. I was we at the beginning of March, I believe. So it was so frustrating. So I was hopeless as well. What I'm going to do? What is that end of the world? Actually. Uh, indigenous people, even my family, they went through very struggles, everyday struggles. So uh, in during the COVID time, I take my children to the indigenous uh, land or other land. I tell my stories, uh, what I have been learning. At the same time, I tell my stories to my children. So as you can see how they are learning uh, this story from here and also story from my own culture own language, how it was sustainable, what my ancestor did. In the same time, we had many opportunities to uh, learn uh, from elder and knowledge keeper. Very lots of webinars are going on. And we ask, um, the, what are the research questions or what we can do during this COVID time in the webinar session as well. And if you search there, you will find many workshop with the elder knowledge keeper uh, from the various universities and most of them are free to join. And I asked those questions. And uh, we had many opportunity uh, that elder want to be part of what we are doing through individual phone call meetings. For example, I have a meetings today over phone call and elders came uh, day before yesterday to explaining uh, importance of the native plan and how climate change impacting uh, the, their sustainable livings or the indigenous plants here. So there are many opportunities during the COVID. Uh, COVID. Uh, be, open, uh, be open to learn, uh, challenge ourselves. I would say COVID is also helpful, also, also challenges, but we have to transform our challenges to the possibilities. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for really, uh, just really thoughtful answers and uh, for the talk. Uh, there's so much to learn. And thank you. I hope I, I, hope I, um, um, I, hope I address oh, all the Sorry, questions. could I enter? There is one more. I think it was in the chat by accident. If Professor Dutta has a couple more minutes. Sure, uh, sure. Another one, another one about sort of the kind of practicalities of implementing uh, these kinds of research strategies. So um, Avalina asks, did you find that your research with indigenous communities took longer than academic research timelines allow? If so, how did you manage the timeline, the deadlines? Of course, our um, academic uh, structure is very different the way community practice. Um, because it's very certain line, you have to finish your PhD three, four years, your funding is going, three months, and it's very difficult to incorporate the com what community wants into our research. And I learned a um, very painful way. But uh, as I said, uh, if we want to solve big problem, then it take a long time. But if you want to, for example, if I want to uh, learn what is that, what are the TD rights in environmental sustainability? How I can learn from the elders? We don't need to talk about the thousand elders, right? So we can, if we can take in-depth learning from the elders, the community, and focus very particular point, 
asking what they wanted to put us. It, I found it's maybe easy uh, to deal. And as I said, once I done my master, I have opportunity to doing PhD with other topics. Or once I'm do, finishing my PhD, I have the opportunity to do bushdog or faculty research on other topics. So um, of course, uh, it's uh, very difficult, but we have to start somewhere to decolonizing and building from there one after another. An opportunity will come uh, if we are excited. As I said, we have to be excited the work we are doing because I believe we can make change and we have to make change. This is our responsibility and opportunity will come uh, once we are excited. So yeah, okay. I think, did, did we answer everything? Oh yes, I think we did. Okay, thank you a lot. Thank you a lot for taking the time. Uh, um, and I mean, before, um, before I, we, we close and um, I will give it like a tiny bit information, but I just wanted to ask you, Professor Data, if you had any uh, kind of final words of wisdom. <laughs> I know we, we, you shared so many uh, like, but yeah, if you have, if you don't have, that's fine. But if you have any final word of wisdom that you would like to share. Well, um, it, as you um, had opportunity to learn my stories, you become responsible to your own research. And I love to learn from you. And if you have any uh, questions or you want to talk in future with me, you have my email address. And be, keep, keep in touch, build uh, your own uh, relation with, uh, with your uh, similar minded, create, try to create own network to, because we have responsibilities and we are a relative, not we uh, versus others. We, have, we, are, we are responsible to each other. Thank you, thank you a lot. So um, just um, we, so I will provide just a couple of words uh, just to finish um, and well, and to thank the audience uh, who, who came and, and stayed uh, until the end. Um, and uh, we, we will see you um, next month uh, on October 26th um, uh, for um, a talk with uh, Professor Deborah McGregor uh, from New York University, um, still on the topic of indigenous research. Uh, and uh, so we continue the conversation basically. So again, thank you, Professor, De Professor Data, sorry. Uh, thank you everyone. And uh, we hope that you had fun. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Thank you, thank you. That was really, really interesting, really. Thank you. And it was a bit longer, but <laughs> thank yeah, you. Thanks, thanks for your time. Uh, okay. I think we can. I think we can stop. Yeah, all right. I think I'm going to press late too, but thank you so much, Professor Data, and, and staying until the very end and answering um, and for all the questions. Really. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's, it's a very grateful questions that people are asking. People are uh, want to make change. That is the exciting part. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Donald, I think we can close the... Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice to right, see you. Now. And if you come to Calgary, just send an email. You can have coffee and meet again. Yes, we'll do. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do. That was a great talk. Thank you very much. Very inspiring. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'll sign up. Right. Right? Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.